Hello everyone, today I have a new video for you. I wanted to showcase uh, one of the most recent updates with the RVEST package. Um, this is an ongoing update, it's experimental, but I think it's a very exciting update because this will sort of eliminate the, use, the need for the RSelenium package. So I'm hoping that through this video you can see some of the potential that the RVEST package holds, and I'm hoping that uh, hopefully with the proper maintenance and more and more testing, this package um, can fix the current issues it has and it can become a very solid one. So for this use case, I'm just, I'm just going to be using um, Kelly Blue Book as an example to show you how we'll scrape data from it and interact with it. So I'm going to go ahead and load in the tidyverse package and load in the rvest package and run those. And now, uh, typically speaking, if we wanted to use rvest for this, um, you know, we could we would just use the read HTML function. Um, now to show you exactly what I'm thinking of scraping, I wanted to go and look at the price of used cars in, um, in my area. So I'm going to click on this price new used. And I'm going to go to search by price. And I'm going to set a maximum price of $20,000 as an example. And then I'm going to click on see results. And it's going to give me this URL, which has a list of all the cars in my area that are under $20,000. So I'm going to copy this URL and that's going to be our starting point. Now, typically what I'm looking to scrape is probably just like the titles and maybe the mileage and the price. Um, but I'm going to just show you a quick example with the, with the titles. So we're going to go ahead and put in the URL and set that equal to our URL. And then I'm going to go ahead and pass it into a read HTML function. And if you notice, we actually do get an error here, which says error in open dot connection. This usually happens when, for multiple reasons, um, mainly with packages like Arvest. So there are some websites that just strictly block out Arvest from accessing the site. Typically, you can bypass this with using like a package like Arselenium. Um, but in this case, this is where you would have to use both Arvest and Arselenium to even proceed. But with this new update with the Arvest package, we now have access to a new function called read HTML live. So let's go ahead and use that. So read HTML live and pass in the URL. So if we press enter, you're going to notice that we have a current connection. So in other words, we actually do need to close in our previous connection because we tried to connect to it. So the way to do it is we're going to just type in page, access the session attribute, and then click on close and then run that. And if we get a true message, that means we had an already open session that we needed to close. Um, so that's one thing that you need to do. Um, but if you're running this for the first time, read HTML live, like first time in your session, you do not need to run this pr uh, prior. So let's go ahead and rerun this. And if you notice, it ran successfully without any errors. Now let's take a look at the structure of this object. And if we look at the structure of this object, we're going to notice that it is a, uh, a class type of live HTML, which is like this custom class. Um, it has access to multiple functions, which we will be going over some of them, such as click, which allows you to click on elements, um, HTML elements, which allows you to find elements, um, press, which allows you to um, sort of type in characters into your search box or anything like that. Um, you also have Oh, that would be no press would be more of uh, sorry press would be more of like the keyboard uh, strokes so that's what's more a press is more of so if you want to enter like click on enter or backspace and so on and so forth um, type would be the actual one where you type in the text um, and then there are a few other functions in here um, but you could potentially see that with these functions inside of here they are sort of similar to what you would get with our selenium because the whole point of our selenium is to interact with the web browser so now you're getting the chance to interact with the web browser without necessarily having to have a web browser running um so this is a pretty cool pretty cool potential and let's sort of explore uh, some of this together 
So now that we have this page object, um, we can start exploring some of these uh, functions. Now, one advantage that I do want to add with this is that although this is a live HTML object, you can still run the rvest functions on this. And we're going to see uh, an example shortly. So let's say I wanted to go ahead and extract um, all of these car titles. So I'm going to go in and um, I'm going to right click here and click on inspect. And I'm going to go see where the car title is. So right here we have the H2. It's a, it's a, it's a header level two. Um, and it has a specific, it comes with a specific class over here. So let's see if we can use the class name for this. Now, one of the downsides to this is I noticed that when it comes to finding elements, um, so let's go ahead and do page dollar sign HTML elements. There is a CSS and XPath um, option, but it seems that the XPath option tends to not work. Uh, right now, it's more like the, just the CSS selector option, which is working. So that's what we're going to work off of. So in this case, for this CSS selector, um, we're working off of an H2 and we're looking at the class type. So I believe it would be an H2 dot um, and it would be this right here. Um, and actually, maybe this is a time to show you a cool feature in in uh, Google Chrome where you can actually ask AI to help you out with this tag. So I'm just going to say uh, write me the CSS selector of this tag using the class name. So it's going to look at it and it's going to actually give you that CSS selector. So here is the full um, CSS selector. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it inside of here. So if I were to run this, it actually returns to me um, the, the, the elements. So just to kind of confirm, um, I want to go ahead and extract the text here and see if it actually does extract it. So I'm going to pipe this into an RVS function just to show you that this actually does work. So I'm going to say HTML text, which is from the RVS package. I'm going to click run. And as you can see, um, it actually lists out the, um, the car names. Now, of course, this is not going to match what we have because at the end of the day, this is a separate session from what um, RVS is running in here. So that means the value of these vehicles could be um, arbitrary, like the order of them. But we do know that it's still pulling in those um, those cars. Now, one thing that we do notice is that typically speaking, wherever you run this, you're going to get a lot more cars in here. Um, so why is it only extracting six? Well, that's because you need to scroll through uh, the, what it requires is you need to scroll through the page for all of those uh, values to load in. Um, so one way to actually do that with this new update um, is you can actually scroll so what we could do here is we're going to just type in page dollar sign and then we're going to say scroll by and the scroll by is you're just specifying how much you want to scroll um, how many units you want to scroll by um, there are two arguments there's a top and then there's the left we don't need the left because we're not scrolling horizontally we're just scrolling vertically so we're only going to need the first argument which is top and i'm going to just set it to a very large value i'm just going to set it to maybe like ten thousand um and then I'm just going to run that. And now it's scrolled down, assuming 10,000 with it being such a large value, that means it's scrolled all the way to the bottom of the page. So now if we rerun this function, uh, we're going to notice that we actually get the entire list of vehicles over here. So that's really how you handle that, um, because with a lot of these pages, um, they tend to refresh based on how, you, uh, how, far, how far down you scroll. All right. So... Let's say I want to collect the URLs for all of these um, items in here. So go ahead and inspect. And let's say I want to collect all the URLs behind each of these listings. So I'm going to click on the name and then go a little bit up. And here we have the um, A tag inside of here. Um, so it looks like it's the A tag. It's of a class of link undecorated. Um, so maybe we can use this as a starting point for us. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do the same thing. Go to AI and ask it and say, write me the CSS selector of this tag using the class name. And it should give us 
a very identical structure to what we had before. So this is the a dot link undecorated. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and type in page HTML elements. Um, I'm going to use the CSS again, since the X path doesn't really work. And then I'm going to just use that right there. So if I run this, it's actually going to return me those elements. So if I go ahead and I pipe this into uh, HTML attribute, which is an RVS function, and then say I just want the href, uh, the value of the href attributes. So it's actually going to return to me um, those links. Now, one of the things that you might notice here is that it's probably getting you a lot more vehicles than the ones listed. And then if that's the case, what you need to do is you just need to um, specify where it like you have to specify sort of the hierarchy. So you want to say here that um, you want the only the links that are within the item card body margin bottom auto, which seems to emphasize the ones that are just in the car listings. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that class name. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do with this one. So it looks like uh, it's a div that has a class. Um, so actually, let me ask AI for this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and here, and I'm just going to say, write me the CSS selector, um, which is within the div class, um, div with a class name of, and then I'm just going to paste the class name in there. So it's going to analyze the prompt. Um, so there we have it. So this is how you would sort of create that structure where you tell it where to look within first and then give me that um, A attribute in the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, paste that. And if I run it, now we get those 17 uh, URLs, which are strictly uh, matching those 17 car listings that we have over here. Excellent. So another thing that you could do with this new update is you can actually click on items. So that's one thing that I do want to show you here um, is let's say, for example, we want to go to the second page um, right here. So let's say we go all the way to the bottom and we have this next button here. So let's go ahead and inspect it. Let's say we want to click on this. So um, this would be within right here. So it would be this button right here. So it's a button, aria label, next page. Um, this is basically what we need, and we're probably also looking at extracting the CSS selector for it. So now I'm going to click uh, click on it and ask it a question saying, um, write me the CSS selector of this tag using the aria label value. So it's going to write that script for me, and we have it over here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just type in page and then using the click function, which is available within this new update. And it's already asking for the CSS, and I'm just going to type in um, that CSS value. But um, in this case, I just need to change these to single quotes because we are already using double quotes outside. So if I click on this, um, nothing will happen. but Watch what happens whenever I try to rerun this script, which is uh, going to get us the list of the cars. So if you notice here, um, comparing this list to the previous one, so if we scroll up and we take the previous one, it's actually somewhat different. It's not the exact same list. Um, so if we look at it in entirely, like let's say if we're looking at the number 10, which is a used uh, 2016 Nissan NV, and we look at the number 10 in here, we're going to see that it's a certified 2022 Kia Forte. So this is also indicating that um, we're on a new page. And also to show you, um, looking at the um, href, looking at those links of each of the listings, um, we're going to notice that now in our listings, we see that there is actually a new... Um, value here called uh, first record equals 25. What that means is each page has 25 listings. So whenever it says that the first record is 25, that means it's on the second page. 
And, so, and in that case, like if it says rec first record equals 50, that means it's on the third page. But if you notice in our previous URLs right here, we're going to notice that we don't even have any of that starting, which assumes that this is the very first page. So now that we have that, um, let's, for example, click on it again, just to show you that it does go to the third page. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on this again. And now we have totally new value. So right here in place number 10, we have a 2016 Ford Mustang. Um, if we click to get the links of the items, uh, we're going to see that, that, that now the first record is equal to 50. So this is really showcasing um, that you can actually click on the page and interact with it. Now, there's one feature that's really interesting here um, that is if you say page dollar sign um, view, what this allows you to do is it's going to open up a new tab for you and it's going to show you sort of a live view of uh, of your session. So it's going to show you the live view of that read HTML live object we just created. Um, so this is really good for sort of tracking where you're at with the code and like when it comes to executing certain things. So let's, for example, try and um, click on, on another page here. So I'm just going to run it. Um, it doesn't really show anything interactively right away, but if we try to refresh the page, you're going to notice that now we have new results and that's because it's on that other page. Um, now, typically speaking, this has been kind of unstable. It's not really working sometimes or not all of the time. Um, so this is one of those things where uh, it's not really in a fully stable position just yet, but having this feature is very fantastic. Uh, and in order for this to work, you do need to have Google Chrome installed. Um, and then last but not least, whenever you're done with the session, you could just type in page, uh, session, and then close. If you run that, it's going to tell you that the WebSocket is disconnected, and it's going to show you that true message here on the on the left side, and that means that it is now officially disconnected, and there are no sort of connections currently running. So this is just a really quick update on what uh, Arvis is going to potentially look like in the future. I hope. Um, Hadley Wickham and the rest of the developers working on this package um, can really sort of stabilize this package and hopefully we can get out of this uh, experimental phase and be able to really take web scraping to the next level strictly just with Arvest. So I wanted to thank you so much for watching this um, informational tutorial. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.